Roe versus Wade was a decision by the United States Supreme Court that found there was a constitutional right of a woman to control her own body, and they based that right on a right of privacy. In 2018, the Supreme Court slowly shifted towards a more conservative ideology. In 2021, a Mississippi lawsuit against an abortion provider called Dobbs v. Jackson prompted the review of Roe v. Wade. When the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade, the whole world was watching and reacted. My choice. The decision is likely to make abortion illegal in half of the United States. In the South, many had passed laws that said if Roe versus Wade's ever overturned, that the minute it is overturned, our law restricting abortions to almost no circumstances goes into effect. And it's like, oh, well, we don't want the federal government to have full human rights for women. So we want to keep women as second-class citizens and let the states decide how oppressed women will be. Americans who live in the states in the South don't have the same rights as women who live in Kansas. 18 states home to more than 25 million women of reproductive age, have banned or restricted access to abortion care, taking away their once constitutional right. We know that women or patients die or that there's increased morbidity when abortion is illegal. We know it. It's a fact. Scientifically, the uh, fetus is, an is a human individual, then, then we're talking about human rights here. There should be no killing of this individual from the moment of conception on. My name is Allison Wilson. When I had my abortion, I was 22 years old. What I feel very strongly about is if you don't support abortion, don't have one and stay out of my business. As regulations banning abortion are increasing, people like Meg Autry, a gynecologist at UCSF, are working to provide equitable access for abortion across the United States. My name is Meg Autry, and I am the founder and CEO of Prowess, protecting reproductive rights of women endangered by state statutes. Growing up in the South, I was very aware of the gambling boats on the Mississippi River, and so I'm like, there's gotta be something about these boats that are you know, that you can gamble on the boats, but not on the land. If you look at a map of the U.S. and you look at the Gulf Coast, every state bordering the Gulf is a restrictive state. There's parts of the oceans that are governed by federal law, and then there's other parts that are governed by international law. And so that's why you can leave a state and go, you know, still pretty nearby into water, but the power of the state to control stays within its border for the most part. The goal or mission of prowess is to provide surgical terminations, contraception, STI testing and treatment and potentially vaccinations in a floating clinic in the Gulf of Mexico. The providers and the crew will get on where abortion's legal, they'll be in the SWAT, and then we'll have to get patients out there. Our goal would be to serve about 40 patients in a day. We would have two providers, like two doctors, and then we would have a nurse, you know, medical assistant, a head nurse, and then an anesthetist. It is obvious that uh, turning back of Roe v. Wade has a terribly, really a fatal impact on women and girls of poverty. People in the southernmost United States and the states that we're looking at are very are poor, more likely to be immigrants or undocumented. This is meant to provide surgical abortions to people who can't afford the time away um, or afford the other options available to them. Currently, a woman living in Brownsville, Texas, a state with restricted access to abortion, would need to fly to a state such as New Mexico to receive legal abortion services. 
This could include two or more unpaid days off of work and childcare and travel expenses. With the Prowess Vessel, this two-day trip could be shortened and free services would save hundreds of dollars. It would be amazing if I've already signed up to be a volunteer. I hope it comes to fruition. I think it's, it's going to take a lot of fundraising. From small donors, we've raised about a quarter million, and we did that you know, in in six weeks, I mean, the, the response to the press, but it'll take about three million to buy a vessel and then three million to remodel it. And then we're gonna have to have money for operations. And so we feel pretty confident that through foundations, we'll be able to fund the operations part of it, but the actual buying the vessel and the remodeling of it is what we need. And so that'll be about $6 million. In California, abortion will always be a right. Are Prowess's efforts to expand its reach rooted in inequality, or are they undermining our democracy? Hello, my name is Janet Barana. I co-founded the Silent No More Awareness Campaign, which is the largest mobilization of women, men, and families who regret their abortion experience. Well, I think what they're trying to do is to go around the will of the people of that state. If that state, through their elect elected officials, has passed laws limiting abortion, and they're trying to go around that, then what they're trying to do is go against the will of the people of that state, which I feel is, is not good, not correct, not American. It's not the people, really, it's the politicians. Abortion should be a patient and her doctor, period. No one else should be involved in that decision. I think that we need a lot more people like this doctor who are thinking about how to step into the gap and help women who need it. We're not trying to exist in perpetuity. We're trying to be a bridge until our country makes the right decision. If I'm successful in getting this money, I will not be talking to you again.